Hi, my name is Wilson Pun. I've been a real estate attorney in New York for over 10 years now, and I've helped hundreds of clients close on their real estate transactions. Closing costs refer to the wide range of costs that are associated um, when you either purchase or sell a home. So because they're both sides of that transaction, uh, purchasers have their own closing costs and sellers have costs associated with their sale as well. As a seller, it's typically customary in New York for the seller to pay transfer taxes. If your property is in New York State, is 1.425%, and uh, for New York State transfer tax is 0.4%. If you are a seller, if you've used a agent, of course you'll have to pay for your real estate agent or broker commissions, but that's typically paid outside of the closing uh, process. Purchaser's closing costs typically are a bit more complicated. It depends on if they're getting uh, financing, if they're getting a mortgage, for example, you're going to have a mortgage tax, which is typically about 2% of the amount being borrowed. So I say typically because it can range based on the amount you're borrowing. Um, you're also going to have, if the purchase price is over a million dollars, you're going to have to pay a mansion tax, which is 1% of the purchase price. And then you're going to have um, title costs, which title insurance is going to vary, but then they're going to do other searches to see what other costs of of your transaction. Closing costs, in addition to what I mentioned, they're generally, you can estimate it as a purchaser to be anywhere from around two to I would say 6%. And that's, there's a wide range there because like I mentioned earlier with the other categories such as the mortgage tax if you're getting financing, if for example you're buying a one to four family residential property, it's going to have different closing costs than say a condo or co-op where there may be you know, HOA fees, uh, other common charges, move-in deposits. So there's a variety of other factors and costs that really depends on your property type, purchase price, location, which all affected. Title insurance is when a title company, they look at all the public records that are associated with the property that you as a purchaser are looking to buy and seeing what potential title issues that may come up. So title issues are any one or any issue that may have a claim senior to your potential or your future fee ownership of the property. So say for example, in the past, the seller, the party that you're buying the home from, had a judgment against them that's you know attached to the property, that judgment would have a senior position over your claim, over your fee ownership claim to the property. Or let's say um, the seller previously took out, had a private mortgage or borrowed money from a friend who recorded the mortgage from, of the amount of money loaned against the property. That might take you know a while to clear. Typically, when we say mortgage, if it's from a bank and it's used to purchase a property, assuming the bank is still in existence, it's not that hard to request a payoff from them. And that's something that you know, can be done relatively quickly and on a pretty routine basis. It gets a bit more complicated if you have, for example, a seller that's been in their home for 50 years and they have mortgage that supposedly was you know, never paid off, there's no records of it, you can't find anyone to reach out to to get more information. So sometimes you have small hiccups uh, when it comes to uh, title issues, but then sometimes you have other issues that come up in a title report will take a bit more time to address. So by doing all this work, the title company is therefore confident in saying, look, we've done all the work we need to do we've done all title clearance that we needed to do. We're confident that we're going to ensure your purchase of this property for however much you're purchasing it for. And if, for example, somebody just appears one day, let's say it's an estranged son of the seller that wasn't disclosed to you and say, look, when my father passed away, I should have had an interest in the sale of this property since my permission you know, wasn't, uh, wasn't given on the sale. I'm now coming back and making a claim against your ownership of the property because it should have been mine. So title insurance will defend you against situations like that because they should have already taken a look at these issues. They should have already um, looked at all the potential errors, gotten all the affidavits uh, that they need to, to be confident to insure your transaction. And if someone something like this comes up, they're relatively confident that they'll be able to defeat it if it does come to litigation. So the final walkthrough typically is done, I would say a day or two before we actually close on a property. So during the final walkthrough, you as the purchaser are going back into the home, probably for the second time. You probably saw it at least the first time when you went uh, to go tour the house, maybe even saw it a second time already if you accompanied the inspector to do a home inspection. So you have your home inspection report now, and you know with that either in hand or in mind, so you're going back to do the final walkthrough before closing, just to make sure the condition of the house really matches up with what you saw the first or first two times. If there's any sort of big discrepancy, let's say for example, suddenly, an outrageous example would be there's a sudden hole in one of the walls, or suddenly you see you know, there are 
uh, some floorboards missing. For example, you note that maybe uh, last month there was a very big rainstorm and, and then you saw in the news that there was lots of flooding in the area where this property is located. Well, then you may want to make sure you take a look as you're walking through the house that there is no sort of uh, water stain marks that, you know, nothing really looks out of place. Uh, typical with water damage and floods, you want to make sure that there's no new issues or cases of mold. That's pretty common, especially if you're in an area with a flood zone that, you know, that your property may be located and you want to pay special attention to potential water damage that may cause longer term issues. If suddenly during your final walkthrough, you notice happened to an actual client of mine where during the final walkthrough, they're going through the cellar and they note that one of the walls are now actually buckling. Whereas they this wasn't prominent or they didn't notice that at all in the initial walkthrough, they went back to the inspection and this wasn't the case. That closing, unfortunately, um, this wasn't as simple as getting a credit. When you have a potential structural issue such as wall buckling, you're going to need to get some a professional in there, like an engineer, to make sure to see what's causing that issue. If it's superficial um, or if it's a structural issue, if it's a structural issue, then you know we we'll go through a whole host of other potential problems, which hopefully you know most people don't need to do. But those are things that you really want to note that during your final walkthrough, the condition overall of the property should be pretty much the same as when you initially saw it, except for you know your usual wear and tear. If people are still uh, living there or you know if people have already moved out if the sellers have moved out that no damage you know occurred during the move out process that no damage occurred during the move out process if there is sort of damage things that are relatively minor let's say you know nicks uh, scratches uh, chips things that can be discussed or credited for typically the purchaser will say look you know this has been damaged since I last saw it, last saw it or you know these issues are present now and they weren't before I'd like to request you know a couple of hundred dollars credit those can typically be you know a coin flip um, some, a lot of times uh, sellers will say no, but you know, it's unless it's a very big issue, a credit can be you know discussed so that it doesn't sort of blossom into a larger issue between the parties if the closing is going to happen anyway. A lot of times both the purchaser and seller just want to ensure that the closing uh, is done and the property is sold smoothly.